Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Bukam Son Timkulu and I talk about different health conditions. Today, I want to talk to you about a condition that affects about 422 million people worldwide and leads to about 1.6 million deaths each year. This condition is diabetes. Diabetes is a chronic condition that consists of a constant increase in your blood glucose levels. It has four specific types, mainly type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, gestational diabetes, and other specific types. The one that we generally know or hear about is type 2 diabetes, and it is also referred to as diabetes mellitus or sugar diabetes. The reason why it is referred to as like this is because of different lifestyle factors that cause this type of diabetes. I will discuss all the different types in more detail in this lecture. Now, people with diabetes generally have the same symptoms independent of the type. What you are likely to experience if you have diabetes is frequent urination, extreme hunger, unexplained weight loss, peripheral neuropathy, blurred vision, slow healing of your sores or wounds, frequent infections, and so forth. What I want to do today specifically is discuss what glucose is, how it is processed in the body, and its actual function in the body, I then want to explain how high glucose levels can lead to diabetes through insulin resistance and then look at the different types of diabetes. I will then also discuss the diagnostic criteria for diabetes, how it is managed, the different complications you're likely to hear about or experience if you have diabetes, and then how you can prevent getting diabetes, specifically type 2 or gestational diabetes. Please note that this is just for educational purposes and if you have any concerns, please do seek professional medical advice. And don't forget to like and share this lecture to as many people as possible so we can reach as many lives as possible together, as well as to subscribe to my channel if you wish to see more and more videos like this. What glucose is, is a type of sugar known as a monosaccharide, which is broken down from carbohydrates into this form. It is generally used for energy and 50% of the glucose that we need in the body goes to the brain and helps keep the brain functioning optimally. The rest of it is either stored or used in our muscles or other systems in our body when needed. Now let's look at how glucose is processed and stored in the body. First, you would eat a meal, generally a meal that has carbohydrates in it or a type of sugar in it. That could be anything from fruit to vegetables to your breads and pastas and other starchy types of food. It then goes into your digestive system, which is your stomach and your intestines. And that carbohydrate is converted into a simpler form known as glucose and it is easily available to be absorbed into the bloodstream. So it is absorbed into the bloodstream and your glucose levels in the blood sort of goes much higher than what your body needs in the blood. And your body becomes fairly unhappy with that. And it releases a hormone known as insulin and insulin can then allow for that excess glucose to go into the right body systems where it is stored. So insulin is sort of like the key that opens the door for glucose to go into your liver 
as well as your muscles, or to travel to any other parts of the body that need the glucose immediately for energy. But in terms of storage, it generally goes to your liver and your muscles. Once it enters your liver and your muscles, it is then converted into glycogen, which is how it is stored until it is needed again if your glucose levels in the blood goes below normal. But the aim is to get the excess glucose out of the bloodstream and keep the amount that is needed in the bloodstream. And this happens with the help of insulin mainly and the muscles and liver being readily open to allowing insulin to work on them to do this job. Once it is stored and the levels have been restored in the bloodstream, your body is happy again, you have enough energy and everything is fine. So knowing this process and knowing that insulin helps unlock the liver and the muscles to take up glucose, why doesn't it do so in type 2 diabetes? This is because of insulin resistance. You see, when we have excess glucose all the time, some of it is converted into glycogen and the rest is converted into fat. Now, these fat cells in, inside and around the organs cause metabolic changes within the organs themselves. And now, though the muscle and the liver don't respond to that increase in insulin in the blood anymore, sort of like it's changed the lock and the key doesn't fit. And this causes more glucose to stay in the bloodstream whenever you ingest it after insulin resistance takes place. And that increase in your glucose over a long period of time gets out of control and leads to this development of type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes. This is the most common type of diabetes that affects mainly adults. But due to the different lifestyle changes that we are going through, more and more children are susceptible to getting type 2 diabetes. So what happens with type 2 diabetes is insulin resistance. You have enough insulin and your body can take up glucose, but your liver and muscles are resistant to the stimulus of insulin and they don't take up that excess glucose, leading to too much glucose in the blood and thus type 2 diabetes. Over time, your body cannot keep up with the excess glucose in the blood and your pancreas stops making insulin effectively for the body to use. Next, we have gestational diabetes, which is also like type 2 diabetes, except you develop it during pregnancy. So your mus muscle and liver still do not respond to the stimulus of insulin. And that causes to the development of that diabetes during pregnancy. The nice thing is that Generally, after birth, the type 2 diabetes goes away. But it is sort of like an indicator that if you do not change your lifestyle from that moment of pregnancy, then you could develop type 2 diabetes in the, later on in about 10 years' time. Next, we have type 1 diabetes. This is an autoimmune form of diabetes and you're generally diagnosed with it during childhood, but there are some adults that get it later on. What happens in type 1 diabetes is that the cells in your pancreas that produce insulin get destroyed by your immune system. And so your body cannot produce insulin at all. And if it does, it is very little to meet the demands to allow for glucose to be absorbed by the liver and muscles. And so if there's no insulin being produced, then your glucose levels in the blood remains high over time. And these people generally need insulin in order to survive. In other specific types of diabetes, injury to the pancreas is generally the cause. The pancreas makes insulin and if it is injured, 
it may injure the cells that make insulin, leading to a decrease in insulin in the blood as seen in type 1 diabetes. This will then lead to that excess glucose in the blood because your body cannot produce enough insulin. There are three different tests that you can do to check your blood glucose levels. The most common one that people do is your fasting blood glucose, which can be done either as a blood test or it can be done through your AccuCheck machines as seen in this picture. The other test that you can do is an HbA1c blood test. This checks the amount of glucose that is in the blood over a period of the past three months. And the last test that you can do is an oral glucose tolerance test. And this checks how your body reacts to an increase in your glucose levels and how it is processed and digested over a period of two hours. So for a person with diabetes, your HbA1c will be greater than or equal to 6.5%. Your fasting plasma glucose will be greater than 7 millimoles per liter. And your oral glucose tolerance test result will be greater than 11.1 millimoles per liter. If you are pre-diabetic, it means that your blood sugar levels are too high to be under normal and okay, but too low to classify you as diabetic. And that is a good time to start to change your lifestyle so that you don't develop or classify yourself as diabetic after a while. But keeping them under the normal values is preferable. How diabetes is managed is mainly through four different steps. Firstly, self-blood monitoring. You want to check your glucose by yourself, take control of that step. Then you want to exercise, mainly doing your aerobic or endurance type of activities, 30 minutes a day for five days a week, more minutes if you can. And this is activities such as walking, cycling, swimming, running, etc. You want to try and increase that as much as possible. Next, you want to change your diet. This can be done through the help of a dietitian or a nutritionist in the beginning who can put you on the right plan for you. I don't want to talk into too much detail of different nutritional things that you can do because I have not studied this and I do not want to give you the wrong idea of what you can do. So getting a nutritionist or a dietitian to help you take the step is the best thing that you can do. And lastly, taking medication if needed or if prescribed. For example, with type 1 diabetes, you need insulin to survive. So you'll probably, probably be prescribed insulin. But in type 2 diabetes, Doing the other factors may be enough for you to decrease your glucose levels. But if it is not, then medication may be prescribed and following the doctor's orders with that is very important. So the first types of complications is acute. This means that it happens suddenly or in that moment. And the first type that you can get is hyperglycemia. This is an excess of glucose in the blood, which you'll generally experience if you aren't taking medication or following any management processes to stop diabetes or stop that increased glucose. The other is hypoglycemia. This is little glucose in the blood. And because the brain needs it a lot for survival, or to do its function, then you get symptoms mainly in your flight or flight or your stress response. And that would lead to your increased heart rate, your anxiety, etc. And if it gets too low, it can cause a, co a coma. And it is very important to notice when those symptoms are coming about 
and getting some sugar into your system to try and increase your glucose levels. Your chronic complications happen over a period of time, mainly three months or more. The general ones that you're likely to see with a diabetic person is adult onset blindness, lower limb amputation that is not due to traumatic activities or experiences, end stage renal failure or kidney failure, and lastly, your atherosclerotic disease, which is your plaque formation in your arteries. And the reason for this is because of the metabolic changes that happen to your arteries in different parts of your body because of the excess glucose. Prevention is very similar to management in that you want to monitor your blood glucose levels quite regularly, especially if it's high and you've started to change your lifestyle. You want to keep a healthy lifestyle by eating healthy as much as you possibly can, as well as by exercising and getting that your aerobic activity in as much as you can each week. Also, you want to check your weight and make sure that your weight is not too much as obesity can also lead to other metabolic changes as, such as diabetes, which will be discussed in the obesity lecture. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you guys have any concerns or need me to explain anything in better detail, please do drop a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Some takeaway notes. Firstly, type 2 diabetes is generally caused by insulin resistance, which is a metabolic change in the body caused by our lifestyle choices. So trying to get that insulin resistance not to happen by changing your lifestyle is the best start to preventing diabetes. Secondly, complications of diabetes should be taken seriously do make sure that you note these symptoms if you are diabetic or if you think you may be diabetic, as well as note what can happen in the long term if you don't follow the plans that your doctor may have put in for you to follow. But noting these different signs and symptoms are important so you can catch them early enough so that they don't have too much of an impact on your life. Please, guys, don't forget to like and share this to as many people as possible so that we can reach as many lives as possible. And to subscribe to my channel. I hope you guys do have a lovely week ahead and I'll see you next week.